It's the battle for the central region, and our two top-scoring chefs, Tom Shepard and Tom Bateman, are competing for a place in the national finals. With creative takes on Desperate Dan's Cow Pie and video game Pac-Man, their promises to be excitement and feasting aplenty. <laughs> Come on, Pac-Man. Oh, watch out, there's a ghost! Oh, no! Andy, I'm gonna get the melon, I'm gonna get the top score! Oh, I died. Four of the central region's finest chefs fought it out until only two remained. Ready for battle? Yeah, I think so, yeah, just about. Taste it. Through to cook for the judges is Tom Shepard, who gained a Michelin star just four months after opening his restaurant upstairs above his dad's jewellery business in Litchfield. The nerves are there, not a bad thing. It's a case of just doing the best you can possibly do. And he's up against self-taught Tom Bateman. He's chef patron at the Flintlock in Staffordshire and a social media cooking sensation on TikTok. I'm aiming for the best. I've got a mountain to climb. It feels like Everest. They're both newcomers to the competition, but received high praise from veteran chef Paul Ainsworth. Tom, it was the best pie I've ever eaten. Presentation among the best I've seen. Now they're fighting to reach the national finals. High clock. And for the chance to cook at our banquet. Need a hug? Well, I'll, I'll never Have say no. <laughs> With dishes inspired by Desperate Dan. Nicely done, Ed. Corky the Cat and Banana Man. They're going hammer and tongs. This is everything that I love about food. To try and impress our judges today. Going through to cook at the national finals is... My goal was to get here. The next step is obviously to get to that final week. It's all I've been thinking about. I'm full of thunder, ready to go. I'm one step away, so to get there would mean the world, obviously, but formidable opponents to try and take on. Chief, we there. Nine to climb. <sighs> yeah, let's do it. Let's go, Good luck, mate. Good luck, boss. Our rival chefs start by focusing on the longest processes from their six-course menus. Super busy. As soon as the beef cheeks are seared, get the mirepoix in there, get the tomato puree in there, get the liquor in there boiling up. I've got to roll cards so that sets ready for the uh, ready for the fish course. So literally, I need to get them done like, literally in the next 15, 20 minutes. Seeing the size of my fish. It's anchor, isn't it? <laughs> Prepping this absolutely massive hake. I've got to get the celeriacs cut into the shape of an egg, and then start on the sauces as well, which is also going to take a lot of time. Hello, chefs. Hi, Hello. Andy, it's quite an outfit. Darling, it's judging day. <laughs> so I'm ready. Are you ready? As ready as we can be, right? As yeah. ready as you can be. There are four new palettes in the judging chamber. The slate is completely wiped clean. Yeah. Between you, there are banquet contenders on these menus. Thank you so much. And I want the judges to know that, all right? Yep. All right, I'll be Thanks. back in a minute. Thanks, Thanks you. guys. In preparation for his starter, Tom is baking golden beetroots in salt dough. While Tom Bateman is salting and chilling hake fillets for his fish course. He's also preparing beef cheeks that will be part of a stew for his main course. It's quite romantic, really, just me and you, mate. It's like quite peaceful. Yeah, it's nervingly peaceful, though. That's the kind of radio on or something. <laughs> this smooth FM. Scrutinising the chef's dishes today is our head judge, Tom Kerridge. He has a total of three Michelin stars, is a double main course banquet winner and has high expectations. We really want to see some more incredible, amazing dishes. The more that we can choose from in finals week, the more banquet contenders, the more exciting it's going to be. And it's just going to drive those standards, those qualities forward. Tom is preparing a ponzu dressing for his canapes by blitzing soy, yuzu fruit juice and seaweed stock. 
while our other Tom is readying tart cases for his canapes and making alterations to his fish course, which was criticised for using two types of fish. Paul and, and I didn't enjoy the monk cheek element of the dish and he suggested using more of the hay cut is what I'm going to do. I've got some trim from the belly here and I'm still going to tempura it like I did before, but I've, I've altered the tempura recipe to one of my own better ones, hopefully. <laughs> As ever, blind tastings will be used to score the dishes, but I want to give Tom the lowdown on the week's events with veteran Paul Ainsworth. Good morning, my love. All right, mate? I am, Tom. Been a good week? It's been an action-packed week. I love that. And you've been hanging out with my buddy this week, oh, haven't you? Oh, possibly the nicest man in the culinary well, world. Well, well, second nicest. Oh, second nicest, obviously. <laughs> We've had a great week. You know, Paul gave out some tens. Wow, I'm I mean, looking forward to these, then. Can't wait for you to see uh, what they've come up with. I do think that there are banquet contenders on these menus. And I'm Desperate really thinking we pie? Oh, babe. Oh, come on. Desperate damn cow pie. And Fungus the bogeyman. Honestly, he's my hero. <laughs> I... Of course he is. <laughs> Helping Tom judge the chef's menus today are Ed Gamble and Nisha Katona. With 16 restaurants and counting, Nisha is one of Britain's top restaurateurs. What I'm looking for are those real crowd-pleasing dishes. This is the banquet to end all banquets, and I want that wow factor as well as delicious food. Whilst Ed hosts a popular food podcast with fellow comedian James Acaster. My eyes immediately go, Desperate Dan's cow pie. Also very excited about the most famous cat in the world, presumably a dish themed on cat dealy. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Hi. Tom. You all right? Very well. Excited. So how's the week been? Well, the Midlands, Paul Ainsworth apparently has given out some big scores and been lots and lots of connection to the brief. You love all that, don't you? I love all that, Nisha. They could put fried chicken on a plate that they'd ordered on a delivery service, and as long as it was well-themed. <laughs> oh, is there any fried chicken? Was I don't think there is, no. Hello, chefs. i just come to tell you that the judges are assembling. Yep. And our guest judge this week is a West Midlands actor. She's known for her comedy and her preschool animation work. So, it's time to get your canapes ready. Yep. All right, guys? Thanks, Andy. Thank you. Lovely. The guest judge they'll be trying to impress made her name not just in the award-winning BBC comedy series Man Like Mo Bean, but also as the voice of Vanessa in Circle Square. <laughs> We may have made too many. We just need a few friends to help eat them. It's Dua Karim. Dua, welcome. Hi. Hello. Hello. Grab a seat. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. You nice, too. Nice to have you here. We see you all over the screen, so it's so incredible to have you at oh, the table. thank you. <laughs> Are you hungry? Yeah. Are you foodie? Yes. Do you like cooking it or just eating it? Yeah. Maybe not cooking it. Yeah, the way you looked away there. Yeah. When cooking was <laughs> I can't lie, if my mum sees this, she'll be like, you do not like cooking. <laughs> For his canapé, Brummy Tom is preparing sashimi tuna crustade with ponzu dressing, soy mayonnaise and topped with a sheet of dashi jelly. While North Staffordshire's Tom has baked beef fat pastry cases for venison tartare tarts. The caviar's open, which is a good start. Oh, wow, well, well done, mate. <laughs> yeah. So the inspiration this year is animation and illustration. And yeah. I, I think I'm right in saying you do a voice for yeah. animation, don't you? Yeah, I play Vanessa the dragon. Vegetables taste boring. <laughs> I only eat veggies, and I know they can taste amazing. I don't believe it. What's Vanessa like? What's her vibe? She's so funny, but she helps everyone at the same time. She sort of does get herself in trouble as well, where she has to rely on other people to help him. But it's like a big family, and you, if anyone else is stuck, she's flying there. <laughs> the dragon's <laughs> flying there. You make her sound like you know, like she lives up the road. No. Yeah. <laughs> she's been in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, my beauties. Four minutes till we have lift off. Tom from North Staff's Quinell's Venison Tartare for his tarts. They look slightly smaller. They are indeed. 
while Brummy Tom adds soy mayonnaise to his tuna crustade. You've got two minutes, gentlemen. And garnishes with some curled chives. Oh, it's gorgeous, Tom. Thanks, Andy. Look at those. You happy, boys? Really happy. Can yeah. you send it? Happy. Service, please. Service, please, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. First, Tom Shepherd's canopy. Let's do it. Very tasty. Mm, very tasty. Mm. What do you think? I like that. I'm, like, a bit picky with texture. Yeah. Mm. But I actually like that. Cos that was quite challenging texture, yeah. really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the jelly was the dashi mm. jelly was really mm. nice. It was a nice addition. It made mm. it look pretty as well. It was very good. I think the tuna got lost. Yeah, too much crustard. Too well, too much crustard. Maybe mm. too much soy. Too much. Mm. It was delicious, mm. but not enough tuna for me. The tuna was more more of a texture than a flavour. Yeah, yeah. Tom Bateman's is next. Okay, you ready? <laughs> That's right up my street. That one. Much stronger flavours, aren't they? I think that one's my favourite. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a bit of warmth and heat that comes yeah. through on that. Mm. I like that. Hold up our favourites. <laughs> Clean, sweet. Yeah. So a strong start for Tom Bateman. Starters are next, and Tom Shepherd is going big on pears. Firstly, by mixing pear juice, apple cider vinegar and sugar to make a pear ketchup. Ooh. Yeah, now, Chef. Gee whiz. Meanwhile, North Staff's Tom has been carving celeriac into egg shapes, which he's coated with a sake glaze, rice vinegar and miso paste. The first starter that we're going to have that is obviously plant-based is a miso glazed celeriac with potato scales, black garlic, apple and date ketchup and apple blossom. And it's inspired by the computer game and book series Dragonology, made by Codemasters, who are from Warwickshire. Great. I've never had date ketchup. That's new. Mm. Have you had brown sauce? Yeah. Got dates in it, mate. OK. There you go. <laughs> so you have. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It's essentially, <laughs> I reckon, well, apple and date ketchup is a posh way of saying brown sauce. <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope. Yeah, in that case, yeah. Brilliant. Looking forward to it. The celeriac eggs have steamed in the oven and Tom is focused on the fiddly business of adding potato scales. Hello, my love. Hello. So, starters ahoy. Yes, yes. How are you feeling? Good. I did well with this one, obviously. You first did time well. Around. It was your highest scoring course. It was. What was Paul's feedback on the dish? He said that so, some more detail on the scales, so I've, I've changed the design of those. And crispier. Yes, so slightly crispier as well. Yeah. Um, Just do what you do, Tom. I can't wait to see it on the pass. Excellent. Thank you, Thanks darling. Good luck. So we've got a dish based on a computer game. Yep. How do, how do we feel about uh, about computer games? Are you a gamer? I used to love computer games, and then I grew up, and I was like, I'm really bad at it, and I realise I'm bad at it, so I'll just stop. Yeah. <laughs> but like before, I when I was. I used to play computer games, <laughs> then I grew up. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> there, there goes there goes my stop. opinion oh, that sorry. I was going to voice yeah. out loud. I, I was <laughs> waiting for Ed's comeback on this. Ed, do you like computer games? Um, actually, some of them are for grown-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's keen to make his potato scales crispier, but has he underestimated the extra cooking time required? All right, Tom, you have three minutes to the pass. You're not looking very far along over there, dear. How's it going? Just a few minutes late, I'm afraid. I'm How many minutes late? Another five, five, ten minutes. Yeah, ten is quite a lot. So let's just I'm really gone. big push and get this out as quickly as we can. Let's get it done, darling. Mum. Yes, chef. Yeah. While waiting for his eggs, Tom starts plating his dish with a swirl of sherry vinegar caramel, followed by sliced pink pickled onions. Need a hug? Oh. Well, I'll never Have say no. <laughs> his celeriac puree is next. 
That looks much better, by the way. Thank you. OK, you've had two minutes of extra time. Let's see how it's getting on, how they come in. Oh, they're nearly there, you know. Nearly there. You're coming up to the four-minute mark now. You might need to get them out, Tom. Go smoking. They look great. Really good colour. Tom, you happy? Um, I've lost a few potato scales, sadly. Tom, they look good. All right. Yeah. Let's get it sent, Chef. Service, please. Slightly traumatic start for you. <laughs> Shake it off, just let it go. Thank you very much. It's like a dragon egg, Nisha. Oh, is that what it is? There's lots of sweet and sour going on, isn't there? It takes a while to get a celeriac soft. I'm literally trying to cut through it. Mine's... I think mine's probably slightly better than yours, then. I think it's a shame. I can just see these potato scales, but you really have to squint to find them. And, obviously, a lot of work's gone into putting them on. There's so much of that black garlic on there that it just sort of... Takes everything else away. The black garlic and, and, and that, that kind of the date ketchup, the the way that it all kind of moves together, it's a little overpowering. The winning thing for me is the potato scales, and there's just not nowhere near enough of them. I really mm. like the concept of it, the mm. delivery of it. It's not quite banquet ready. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect, but as soon as I um, took a bite, I was like, yeah, that's nice. And I really like the date ketchup. Brown sauce, mate. Brown <laughs> sauce wins every time. <laughs> Tom's starter is next. He's baked golden beetroots in a salt crust to ensure they're moist and cooked evenly. So this is Pac-Man, one of my favourite ever games. It's salt baked beetroot, salted almonds, pear ketchup, smoked mayonnaise and beetroot dressing under pear and golden beetroot inspired by the video game Pac-Man. Have you played Pac-Man? No, but I do know what it is. You know what he looks yeah. like? Yeah. Well, that's... I think that it's such a strong aesthetic, Pac-Man, isn't it? So it's quite exciting. We're yeah. going to have a lot of fun with this, yeah. I hope. Not wanting to fall behind again, Tom from North Staffs is getting ahead with the white wine sauce for his next course. As Brummy Tom presses ahead with the golden beetroot and pear jelly that he'll use to make Pac Man's skin. Veteran judge Paul Ainsworth said this dish wasn't big enough for a starter. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Just did fast and furious, making sure everything's set. What, what was Paul's feedback? We thought that it could have potentially been a, acted as a garnish as opposed to like a main event, which I totally took on board. Do you feel that you're more able to kind of give it that energy that it needs? Yeah, 100%. I've just umped everything up. We just turn the volume up on That's everything. It. I can't wait to see the dish. I'm sure they're going to love it. Thanks. All right, thanks, thanks, Andy. Thank you so much. So how did it come to be that you get your part in, in A Man Like Mobile? Because you were only 15, weren't you? Yeah. I was doing my GCSEs. My sister saw an advertisement about a casting call where there was, like, a 15-year-old girl with the West Midlands accent, and I was like, well, no one ever wants the accent, so <laughs> I'll apply. <laughs> but I just went and be myself, and they were like, right, let's do improvisation, and I was like, what? <laughs> and I literally started talking about sheeps in Pakistan, which was, I don't know where that come from, I literally don't know where, but I got the part. So the sheep, the yeah, them sheeps helped. <laughs> really did. <laughs> Service imminent, Tom starts layering his sliced beetroots. Oh, wow. Tom Shepherd, you have four minutes. Followed by his pear ketchup. Is there more topping? Yeah, there's more everything, really. I've, I've, yeah. the, I've cut the pears a lot smaller, so um, every mouthful right. is a little bit different. Right. A few more almonds on there as well. Yeah, just, just bulking it all up a bit, mate. Yeah, yeah. He adds his smoked mayonnaise. Looks incredible, mate. Finally, Pac-Man's pear and golden beetroot jelly casing. I wonder if there's any Pac-Man fans in that chamber. What do you think? I should hope so, mate. <laughs> and if you could just make sure they uh, 
I touched the button as well. I can help it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Fantastic. Thank All you. right, we're back on track, people. <laughs> Tom, Tom, let's be having you. Gorgeous. Well, that's a button. That'll do. <laughs> and I believe there is also some food in here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm slightly worried about this Pac-Man. He, do <laughs> he doesn't look very happy, does he? <laughs> <laughs> OK, here we go. Beetroot's a brilliant ingredient, isn't it? It's so delicious, especially golden beetroot. What do you think? I love the almonds and the smoked mayonnaise. Yeah, me too. That's doing it for me. It's a clever addition to that because it... I think it's in danger of becoming a bit samey throughout. The golden beetroot is beautiful, that lovely earthy flavour. It works really nicely with the pear. I think that they, they kind of combine really nicely. But neither of those ingredients are big, powerful, outstanding. It's not setting us alight. But it is actually a very, very simple, elegant, composed bit of cooking. And beautifully presented as well. It's a lot of yeah. fun. I think if, if this started a banquet, I think it would put a smile on mm -hmm. everyone's face. Without taking a breath, it's onto the fish course. Tom is adding dill to egg yolk, sherry vinegar, and Dijon mustard to make a dill emulsion. While Brummy Tom is reducing his champagne velouté. North Staff's Tom adds sparkling water into his tempura batter to make it extra crisp. So we're onto the fish dishes now, and this first one is called What's Under Corky's Hat? It's a pan roasted and brown butter poached hake fillet with tempura hake belly, roasted cauliflower puree, and pickled cauliflower stalks, burnt leek, and sea lettuce with a smoked butter and English wine sauce and dill emulsion. And it's inspired by Corky the Cats from the Dandy Comics and the artist Charles Grigg was from the West Midlands. Sounds so delicious. Tempura hake belly. That's, yes. the, bit, that's yeah. the bit that got me. It was like, hello. <laughs> what is that? Hake is a fish, a bit like cod. Yeah. And tempura means it's in a really crispy, lovely batter. Oh. So it's like a posh bit of fish and chips. Yeah. <laughs> Tom has turned his attention to his cauliflower puree. Veteran Paul Ainsworth gave this dish a seven. Hey, darling. Hello. So you got a seven for this dish, your hate yes. dish. Talk to me about Paul's feedback for you. Well, I think the most important thing Paul said was about using, not using the monk cheek and using either more of the hake or going to monkfish in full. So yes. I've taken that on board and gone for some hake belly instead. Well, I really hope it works out for you. Thank you. All Excellent. right, sir. Thank you. Having started blackening leeks, Tom is pan roasting his hake fillets in brown butter. You have four minutes, Tom. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, nearly there. You seem to be breathing in and out completely. That's a good thing. He fries his tempura hake as late as possible to ensure the batter stays crispy. He starts building his plate with the cauliflower puree. Nice plate, Tom. He adds pickled cauliflower stalks. You have two minutes to the pass, Tom. Yep. How's that sauce looking? Good? Sauce is good. Is that still monkfish too? No, this is the hake belly, which I've nice. now lightly cured. Okay. Well, that looks better. Looks a lot better. OK. Oh, it smells amazing. It smells like lovely brown butter. So, hat on each one, please. All right, send it, chef. OK, service, please. It's like one, two, three, and he's back in the room. <laughs> he's definitely back in the room. And am I taking it all off? Thank you. As is tradition on the Great British Money, Tom, uh, we're going to try and force a hat onto our big heads. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yours sits quite nicely, actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, you've got a bun in, have yeah. you? <laughs> Suits you, though. <laughs> Suits you very cabaret.
my piece of fish is beautiful. Mm. Yeah, it's perfect. And the flaky bits of flesh are lovely, but it's just been roasted absolutely stunningly. It's great flavour. But the thing I love about this dish more than everything is it's a real celebration of cauliflower. Mm. That understanding that coming through the roasted cauliflower puree is just delicious. I love this tempura hake belly. It's great, isn't it? It is so crispy and such a light batter. And that dill emulsion is just fantastic. The food has got the wow factor in terms of flavour. How's the presentation? I think it could have been better. I love that. Posh fish and chips. Yeah. <laughs> Sauce is drinkable. Fabulous. Essentially, this dish is, you know, a perfect bit of cooking. But does it connect to the brief strong enough? Tom's fish course is next. He's boiling cold rabi as part of his breakfast-themed dish. This is Fungus the Bogeyman's breakfast. Why are you looking at me? Exactly. Roasted cod in a champagne velouté with coal rabi and an ashadic condiment. Inspired by Fungus the Bogeyman by Raymond Briggs, flaked corn and rotten shaddock is what bogeymen eat for breakfast, you see. Probably not what you want to put in your mind before you eat a fish dish, but <laughs> I absolutely love Fungus the Bogeyman. Do you, really? Oh, yeah. my God, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. good. Great. Love Raymond Briggs. To make his condiment, Tom strips the flesh from a type of grapefruit called shaddock, which he blends with apple vinegar and lemon juice. He's also serving a granola he's created from flaked corn. Hello, Andy. How are you, my love? I'm good, I'm good. So, fungus the bogeyman's breakfast. Yeah. You scored a nine for this very excellent dish. What was Paul's feedback for you? Um, the resting of the cod. Uh, right. And equally, the thickness of the viscosity of the, of the sauce itself. Oh, the sauce. So, you're going to reduce that more? Reduce it more, season it more as well, right. and need to, you know, incorporate some salt in there. It needs mm. seasoning. So, can't wait to see it. I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. Good luck, sir. Thank you, Andy. Have you come across Fungus Bergerman? He's right there. Oh, my God, him. Yeah. Wait, him? Him. Yeah. Oh, okay, not him. Not him. No. Okay, him. Yeah. The one who looks yeah. like a big bogey. Both of them like Tom, in fairness. <laughs> yeah, I look like him. both of them. You yeah. do, yeah. I look like both of them. I'm quite... It depends what sort of what mood you turn up in. <laughs> <laughs> this is happy time. We've had a lot of sleep, and this is Tom today. <laughs> <laughs> You have five minutes, Tom. Chef. Tom has cured cod portions in salt, which will be fried and roasted ahead of serving. Anything yeah, so I can do for you, mate, or you? Uh, just take over that sauce as soon as that kohlrabi comes up, mate. He starts plating with his condiment. But your shaddock. That's Andy's shaddock, yeah. Ooh, that looks beautiful. His cod is next. Right, Chef Kohlrabi, please. The caramelisation on that cod looks amazing. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, looks like it's proper velvety. Crowns it with a quenelle of caviar and serves with sides of green champagne velouté and flaked corn granola. Thank you. Service, please. Wow, that looked gorgeous. Uh, so we've got the fungus, the bogeyman's breakfast menu on the cover of the Rutland Times. Yeah, not reading it though, are we? Let's eat the dinner. <laughs> on to the eating. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at that. And that bit of fish is just perfect. Fish is perfect. The sauce is divine. Mm -hmm. Really delicious. Kohlrabi is such a brilliant ingredient. Um, and I think here it's more textural than flavourful. I'm with Nisha on this. Kohlrabi is not great here. I always think it's an ingredient It's much better in that raw state where it's crispy and peppery and, and that strong kind of hard sharpness that it's got. Here, when you cook it, it's it loses all that energy that it has, and it just becomes a bit 
soft and a bit like overcooked Spranks. It's just... Agree to disagree on that. I think there's still plenty of snap left in there. I think, it, I think it was delicious. I didn't like it, I'll be honest. I didn't think it went well with the fish. I love the fish, though. What do you think of the presentation of the, the way it's been served? Oh, well, really, this is cute. It's yeah. All, yeah, it's very nice. And that, gentlemen, brings us to the halfway mark. That was quick, wasn't it? <laughs> Get yourselves ready, because we're going up for the big one next. Sure. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. As the chefs gear up for their main courses, I'm off to check on the judges. Hello, my darlings. Hello. Hi. All right, How are you doing? <laughs> good. I think right. pretty good. Yeah, it's a strong, solid, lovely morning of food. A yeah. strong, solid, lovely morning of food. Do I? I really enjoyed it. Good. Yeah. There's been some great cooking, actually. A few tweaks and a few twists here. And you could see these dishes get into the banquet. We feel in safe hands. You feel yeah. in safe hands. Yeah. That's very good. Nisha, how are you getting on, my love? There has been this gentle hand right the way through all of the dishes. Those sauces, I will be sad not to have them again. Yeah. And that's what makes you think, is this banquet worthy food? Because I want to see some of that again. Yeah. So do you're an actress. You play a purple dragon yeah. on Circle Square. So you're familiar with storytelling, yeah. obviously, and yeah. flights of fancy. <laughs> Are you getting any flights of fancy from any of this, these dishes and these chefs? Yeah, um, I feel like they're, they're all really good. Um, the pac I feel like that could have been a bit better, but everything else was, yeah, good. They're doing it, they're doing yeah. it. I do want to tell you, it's only up from here on in. Feels like we've entered a restaurant that's got this wonderful kind of vibe and history to it. We're very relaxed into looking forward to the rest well, of the afternoon. Breathe into it, enjoy yourselves. It's lovely to have you here, my no, darling. Same. I will okay. see you after the second yeah. half. Later. Tom Bateman scored seven for his main course yesterday, which features several separate dishes. Sauces on, ox cheeks are on, barbecue's going, ready for beef later, dauphine, I've got to get ready, and um, a lot to do. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, chefs. Hello. How are you? Yeah, all right. Did I catch yeah. you on the run there, yeah, yeah, sir? Yeah, just, just caught my knee on the, on the, <laughs> on the oven there. Uh, uh, well, I come fresh from the judges' chamber and I come bearing news all right. of the happiness that the judges are feeling about your food, gentlemen, about both of the menus. Now we move into the second half. I want you to turn the volume up. Are we ready? Ready. Do we have the energy? We have the energy. Let's do this, people. I will see you very shortly. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Andrew. Tom Shepard's dish will be tasted first. His main element hinges on the beef cheeks that he already has in the pressure cooker. So I'm doing a fresh ketchup, obviously, carrots, just doing a caramelised onion compote for, obviously, the pie again as well, so absolutely loads. Huh? It means a lot to me, this dish does. Obviously, I want to do the dish justice, given the fact that it got a 10 in midweek, so there's no reason why it can't get that again. For main, desperate Dan's cow pie, a beef cheek potato and onion pie for sharing, served with roast sirloin, maple glazed carrots, mushroom ketchup and chive emulsion. Desperate Dan is a chef's favourite character and he was famous for his huge cow pies. The illustrator Dudley D. Watkins went to Nottingham School of Art. Tom's preparing the all-important pie crust, hot crust pastry, adding beef fat into his dough. Hello, Tom. How you doing, Andy? Ah, oh, there she blows. <laughs> the best pie Paul Ainsworth ever had. Yeah, well, I need to start crying when I heard that. Now, I'm assuming, therefore, you're not making any changes. No, not at all. What's the most worrying thing about this? Is it that pastry and the it's setting the, of it's the, the pie? It's the pastry, it's just the pie cooking, obviously, make sure that's on time. Yeah. And then equally, just ensuring that the, you know, the beef's well-rested, the steak's well-rested. I, I need to concentrate on every Absolutely. element. Absolutely. I wish you loads of luck with this, sir. I hope it works out. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tom. That's lovely, that is. Tom just wants to execute exactly the way that he did in the week. It was a glorious pie, stacked full of juicy, delicious, unctuous, beefy goodness. Let's hope he can do it again. As soon as I heard what the brief was, <laughs> animation and illustration, I was like, someone's got to do a cow pie. And finally, it's happened. He's got your five o'clock shadow, hasn't he? Well, there's a lot about Desperate Dan that is very similar 
to me, particularly upper body size. <laughs> <laughs> Ed's got the chin, though. Oh, you have? That's a good point. <laughs> Alongside his pie, Tom is also serving roasted sirloin steak, which he starts cooking in butter. All right, Tom, you have three minutes. Yeah. Are you going to be all right? Yeah, I'm going to be only need another five minutes for my uh, pie. OK. Thank you so much. While he waits, he starts plating with shiitake mushroom ketchup and chive emulsion. Oh, there he is. He portions the sirloin steak. I'm happy with how it's come out. A garnish of chestnut mushrooms and a dusting of sep powder are added. But crucially, is the pie ready? Ooh, pie clock. Oh, my lord, that does look great, huh? Yeah, I'm very happy. The steak hits the plate. And beef sauce completes the dish. OK, service, please. That was hard. That was hard, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was harder than the week. Yeah. Tom, I don't know how to do this. You don't know how to yes. cut some pie? Well, no, but they've given me these things. <laughs> I was asked to do it. <laughs> I would suggest you cut you cut a triangle. Nicely done, Ed. Yeah, you, let me get your plate so Thank you can you. have some pie. <laughs> oh, I don't think you've done bad there, mate. I think all that's right. all right, yeah. But all right, there we go, pie, buddy. Isn't it, Thank you. That pastry sounds really crisp and lovely. Yeah. It does. Some fabulous flavours. That carrot is fabulous. But the meat in that pie is just fantastic. Mm. My potatoes are slightly underdone. Is anyone else finding that? Mine. Yeah, they're quite hard. Yeah. This is absolutely everything that I love about food. Mm. The, the braised beef cheek in the middle is so flavoursome. The pastry is outstanding. Crisp, short, crumbly, everything that you want from a meaty pie pastry. But when it comes to the potato, mm. you want the potato just in that pie to just be a little softer. Which is what you slice so thinly as well. It mm. just doesn't seem to have mm. cooked through properly. Mm. The pastry is really nice. Mm -hmm. The steak's nice. I really like the steak. But the, my potatoes are a bit hard. Mm -hmm. It's wholesome, it's rich, it's filling, and it's fun. It's great. Desperate Dan would be very happy with that mm -hmm. pie, I think. Tom from North Staff's main course is next. He's fried carrots in beef fat, which he then roasts alongside miso onions. Okay, the next dish is May and Ma Lady, and it's barbecue beef sirloin with ox cheek lobby, pom dauphine, Staffordshire ale sauce, and brown sauce. And the dish is inspired by the Stoke on Trent comic strip by Dave Follows. The lead character speaks in a Potteries dialect and has brown sauce with everything. Tom has mixed shoe pastry with riced potato to make pom dauphine. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. How are you? Busy, but better. May and my lady. Yeah. Did I say right? Not bad, not bad. Are you taking on board? The quite complex feedback from um, Paul. Yeah, I'm going to check those dof Dauphine yep. inside out. Execute, and you just need time to rest time that for steak. The sirloin, yeah, so I'm going to give myself okay. plenty of time. You make your fantastic food, Tom. You want it bigger than a seven for this, don't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Double well, digits. Big, juicy <laughs> points, yes. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Tom has had ox cheeks in the pressure cooker for 70 minutes, which will be shredded to form part of his lobby. What's a lobby? Lobby is a bit like a stew. Oh, so okay. it's a, Sometimes maybe leftovers, but it's more like a, a lovely stew from Stoke-on-Trent or Staffordshire. Okay. Which is where you're from. Which is not where I'm from, but it's where I'm married into. <laughs> and I love it very much. Tom's dish will be served with a brown sauce he's made from Granny Smith's, Medjool dates and black treacle. 
The judges are due for another round of steak. This time, sirloin cooked on the barbecue, for which he is leaving plenty of resting time. All right, my darling. You have four minutes. OK. His dauphine go into the fryer at the last minute to ensure they're as crispy as possible. His miso onions start the plating. Dauphine's going to come out, please, yeah? Yeah, sure. I'll check them. Well, they look good. Yeah. 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 He adds his carrots and bone marrow panko breadcrumbs. Got two minutes, chef. Can you spoon this into there, please? Man? The lobby is assembled. OK, 30 seconds. He plates his steak and is ready to go. Yeah, there you go. That's it. And that service, please. <laughs> you happy? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Look great, Tom, right? Yeah, just, this is so much harder than it. <laughs> <laughs> right, some roasted onions here. But I'll come round, I'll do a run round. Uh, roasted uh, onions. Thank you. There we go, mate. And a bit of lobby. All right. Ale sauce, let's go. Thanks, mate. What a great dish. Yeah. It feels very Staffordshire. It's a great piece of beef. Mmm. Very big flavours, isn't it? Very uncompromising. I love the potatoes presented. as well. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. What do you think of those little round potatoes? Amazing. I love that. Yeah, I love them. Feels hard working, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the manual workers' posh main course, and it's delicious. It just lacks a bit of finesse. But a huge amount of skill to pack this amount of flavour yeah, into I, it, and it, also in so dis so many distinct dishes. What do you think? You, you've now seen two main courses. Which one would you see more at the banquet than the other? They're sort of from the same school, aren't they, though, really? There's I could sort definitely of... see both. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just don't know which one I would mm -hmm. pick mm -hmm. over the other. They're two very, very similar dishes. Cooked beautifully well. I would define it by the ketchups. One has got a lovely refined mushroom ketchup, and then the other one's gone... Brown sauce. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Three desserts, please. What are they? Really <laughs> Sweet part Cheers. of the menu. Yeah, you've got time for hugs. For sure. Tom Shepard gets underway by preparing a mango sorbet as part of a dish inspired by an episode of Paddington Bear. Having received strong criticism for the sweet section of his menu in the week, Tom Bateman is making wholesale changes to his dessert dishes. New pre dessert is a yogurt and meadow sweet sorbet with compressed apple, honeycomb still, and gingerbread mousse still. All right, my loves, we have four minutes to pre-desserts. Right. For his sweet curry-based dish, Grummy Tom pipes coconut rice pudding, which he tops with mango sorbet. While North Staff's Tom starts with his meadow sweet sorbet. Two minutes, chefs. Yes, Andy. A gingerbread mousse, mate, is unreal. He adds compressed apple. So is that wild rice from there this time? Yes, Chef, it is. I just felt the dish needed a little bit of texture. And both Toms hit the pass together. OK, service, please. Service, please. Tom Bateman's dish is up first. So we've got Axel's Magic Hammer, yoghurt and meadow sweet sorbet, Ashbourne gingerbread mousse, compressed apple with honeycomb, inspired by Axel's Magic Hammer, a computer game made by Core from Derby. So I think we use the hammer to crack a bit of honeycomb on. Yes. You don't like it? Mmm. I really do. I like the meadow sweet sorbet. I like the gingerbread mousse. I like compressed apple and I like honeycomb. I don't like them all together. Oh, interesting. 
quite like that. I like it. Mm. I like all of those components and I like them together. Very unique. I love the mousse. What did you think of it all together? I agree. Yes! I feel like, I don't know, there's like, when it's together, it don't taste as nice, but separately, when I've tried them separately, I'm like, ooh. Mate, you're mm. so right. <laughs> Tom Shepherd's is next. And Mr Curry's Garden Gnomes, chilled coconut rice pudding, Alfonso mango sorbet, sweet Thai curry foam, crispy rice and coriander, inspired by the Paddington cartoon where Paddington kicks the ball into Mr Curry's garden. No! My nose! Now this I like. Mm. This I love. Yeah. This is fantastic and how brave and how clever are those ingredients? You always worry when you see mango in a dessert because it's so overpowering in some desserts, but this is just perfect. I would say sweet Thai curry foam is something I'd worry about more really? being in a dessert mm. than mango. However, mm -hmm. the balance of that is just beautiful. It's brilliant. I think it's so delicious, this so, one. Are we going to hold up which one we prefer? Yeah. Delete yeah, exactly. the one I prefer. Mm. Yeah, I do. I mean, I do prefer yeah. it. If you look on the little bottom of that, it says, happy 65th birthday. Paddington. It also says Tom was wrong about the first pre-dessert <laughs> and everything went really well together. <laughs> and sometimes he just needs to admit that he's wrong. It's a long old message on this. <laughs> you are up first, yeah. Mr. Banana Man. Hang on. <laughs> and just like that, we're on to the final course of the day. Desserts. Tom gets his dessert underway with a banana cake. And for desserts, we have no ordinary school boy, a white chocolate mock banana filled with a banana mousse and popping candy chocolate, a side of banana cake with caramel and banana ice cream with granola. Celebrating Banana Man, the British comic book character, the cartoon was voiced by Tim Brooke Taylor from Derbyshire. I'm Love excited it. for this Love one. Banana Man. Having already chilled his banana mousse in banana moulds, Tom dips them in white chocolate before chilling them again. Tastier. Hello, my dear. Hi, Andy. Uh, you got a 10 for this. Yeah. So I'm assuming not making any changes. No change at all. Granola the same, ice cream the same, everything exactly the same. Everything not changing exactly anything. the same. What is the trickiest part of this? Uh, the trickiest part, well, yeah, it's, it's the bananas. It's actually the mousse, just setting it hard enough to dip. And then essentially, if you set it too hard, it won't defrost. Hope it works out well for Thank you, Thank you sir. so much. All right. Tom. Thanks, Andy. How do you feel about Banana Man, Tom? I love Banana Man. I like bananas as in a flavour. But as a fruit to eat on their own, struggle with them. Really? really? What's wrong with you? Texturally, it's weird. Texturally? I love the flavour of them, though. Tom portions his cake ready for plating. He uses cocoa powder to add a touch of realism to his bananas. That's absolutely incredible. I'm so sorry, mate. <laughs> You have three minutes, Chef. This is his banana sorbet, right? No, it's banana ice cream. This ice is. cream. Yeah. Next comes caramelised condensed milk. Could you put the cloches on top, mate? Done. All right, Chef? Absolutely. Let's send it. Service, please, guys. I'm done. I'm done. How was your last dish? I know. I can't believe Amazing. it. Amazing. <laughs> what a day. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you get the whole tray? Wow. Wow, well, nice. that's fun. Oh, wow. It smells like them sweets, the banana sweets. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. Rich, sweet, fun, delicious. Taste of banana. Right on brief. 
Brilliant. The cake is so lovely as well. Mm, so I, light, isn't it? You look at it and you think it's going to be thick and stodgy and heavy, and it's not. It's really delicious. But the ice cream, isn't it great? Do you mm -hmm. like that, do you? What oh do you my think? God, this is delicious. Mm. Perfect. It's my favourite, I think, so far. Really? Yeah. That, the mock banana, sometimes we get things like this where you have to really crack through the chocolate and, like, start pinging off everywhere. But it's so thin, that chocolate. And because it looks so fun, it almost takes away from how brilliant a piece of dessert work this is. This really is top level. Tom's next. He's making a parfait by blitzing double cream with honey and egg yolk and adding Woodruff syrup, which he pipes into microphone-shaped moulds ready for chilling. So, this is the second dessert and final dish of the day. Famous Fred, sweet Woodruff parfait, Pedro Jimenez reduction, grated frozen chocolate, cocoa twill and compressed and pickled pear. And it's based on an award-winning short animation by Joanna Quinn from Birmingham, voiced by Lenny Henry, about a famous singing cat called Fred. Tom is baking chocolate twills, replacing the honey version he made in the week. Last one, my darling. Nearly there. You got five for this dish, the most yes. famous cat in the world. What was Paul's feedback? He felt it was um, too sweet. No, it didn't have any any real freshness, and the Jerusalem artichoke didn't really uh, add much. He he really liked the the ice cream and said to concentrate on that flavour because that's the real link to the brief with the milk and the cat. Right, so that's true. He advised to do that as the parfait. So that's exactly what I've done. So you've got milk and wood you parfait now. Yeah. Whole new ball whole, game. Whole whole different. Whole new ball <laughs> whole game. Oh, well, I can't wait to see. It sounds great. Good luck, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Great ingredients because they're not ostensibly over sweet, are they? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You've got the wood rough. You've got the pickled pear. This is quite clever, clever mm. ingredients. Let's see what they do. With plating time approaching, Tom is preparing pears that he's pickled in syrup. His parfait microphones have set. I could fall asleep standing up, mate. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been this tired. He grates dark chocolate. All right, chef, you have five minutes. We oui, chef. A little sweet pickled pear and some compressed pear as well. Adds his chocolate tweels. And finally, he drops the mics. This looks so much better. Thank you. Okay, service please. And that is a wrap. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well. Yeah. It's a bit one-dimensional, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Mm. The dimension is nice. Yeah. Like, the, the parfait itself is delicious, that wood rough. It's got it's a great it. consistency, hasn't it? The compressed pear is really lovely, but sadly, it just doesn't feel... There's enough going on. I'm not sure that compressed pickled pear is the right thing to go with it, to be honest. The acidity level. The parfait itself, I think, is very, very, very good. All the other things that go with it, they're not... They don't make it work, but that's too big and too creamy and clunky and lovely, but it, it needs lots of other things to go with it. You made a pretty good hole in your, in your microphone, <laughs> yeah. though, Dua. What do you think? I love this. Did you? Yeah, yeah but um, I do agree with the... Pick, um, what was the it? Pickled, pickled pear. pear, yeah. Just a little too acidic, isn't it? Yeah. It's not quite... I don't mind something cutting through the sweetness, but that feels like it's something you'd have with cheese. Mm. It's a good dish. It's not a banquet dish. Well, mate, that was um, brutal. Oh, mate. mate, yeah, I think we left everything mm -hmm. in that kitchen and put everything into yeah. those plates. Yeah, good luck, mate. All the best. Thank you, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Likewise.
With both chefs exhausted from their efforts, finally, it's time for the results. Hello there, chefs. Hello. How are you both feeling? <sighs> Relieved, a bit broken. <laughs> bit broken? Yeah. yeah. A little nervous as well, to be fair. Guys, for us in this judging chamber today, it was incredible. We've had dish after dish with, with heartfelt honesty. So I want to know who cooked No Ordinary Schoolboy? That chef was mind-blowing. It was brilliant. I mean, it looked amazing. It tasted incredible. It was honestly just such a brilliant dish. Everything about it was outstanding. 10 out of 10 from me, chef. It was brilliant. Thank you, chef. And who cooked what's under Corky's hat? That was me. Every element of that dish just screamed skill and elegance and such a brilliant understanding of flavour. It was fantastic. Well done. So we didn't know who cooked which dish. So we've written our scores down and we've given them to Andy to add up. The winner of the Central Region going through to cook at the National Finals is... Tom Shepherd. Cheers, Ryan. Thank you so well much. Done. Cheers, Ryan. Thoroughly deserved, mate. Yeah, thank you so much, Ryan. Honestly, well done. I mean, both of you, but that outstanding cooking today. And, you know, for a first-time competitor as well, coming and, and doing it, well, well done, Tom. Thank right. you, sir. Congratulations. And there are some moments, Tom, in your career where you create a dish that's such a beacon and your banana dish was one of those dishes. You got tens across the board. It was phenomenal. Well done. Thank you so much. But Tom Bateman... Uh, outstanding as well. You've had such a good day. You created so many fantastic dishes, like your fish and your main, especially. It's my, my first lobby, <laughs> and I absolutely loved it. It was, it was all great, so well Thank done. You. Being married to a lady from Stoke on Trent is not my first lobby, but that was, shh, that was definitely the best. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Thank you so much for coming and your excellent adjudication. It's been a joy to have you here. Thank you. Chefs, Thank you again. Congratulations, Tom. I'm really made up for you. And I'm Thank really you. made up for you too, Tom, because you just cooked your socks off, both yeah. of you, today. Brilliant, brilliant work. Time for a well-deserved rest. Thank you very much, both of you. Thanks, Scott. I think so, don't you? Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. Thank you. I'm just delighted for Tom, to be honest. He, he absolutely deserved it. He's an incredible chef. Absolutely incredible. I'm like, yeah, I'm quite, um, yeah, I'm quite emotional, to be fair. Got a little daughter, wife, and then my, my mum and dad, you know, watch the show as well every single year with my family. So, yeah, it's quite surreal, actually. The whole feeling's quite surreal. Emotional food from both of these chefs, and Tom Shepard just shone that much brighter and landed. He landed with that banana man dish inescapably. I, I think what happens there when it comes to dessert, we all know that desserts are technically very difficult to get mm. right. But if you've got that background and that history of going through the kitchens and you've learned a skill set, and that's the difference there between someone who's yes. got heartfelt food and who's self taught or someone who's had a bit more time with technique, and that's just where he's grabbed it. Absolutely. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh This mate. is for you. Well, for us, but for you mainly. Thank Congratulations. You so much, Thanks, mate. Mate, so pleased for you. No, thoroughly, you, thoroughly deserved. Thanks, like, mate. I mean, if Banana Man is not at that banquet, there's something seriously wrong here. So do it for Central. Do it for me and do it for Eric. He's to Eric. <laughs> Eric.